Kia ora. Welcome to week 5 of 160.204. This week we're going to continue our study of second order linear differential equations. And as you recall from last week, we were studying the method of undetermined coefficients for solving the inhomogeneous problem. So this in the right hand side here with the function of x only, that's the inhomogeneous term. And we have seen that the general solution in that case is going to be the sum of two terms complementary solution, which is the general solution to the homogeneous equation, so L of y c equals 0, and y p, the particular solution, which is just any solution to the inhomogeneous equation. So y p will not have arbitrary coefficients in it once we've determined it. It'll just be one particular function of x. Now we, uh, we also had that if g of x was a simple function, like a polynomial or an exponential or a sine or cosine, we would try a particular solution of the same form as the right-hand side. And now we'll see one special case in which that doesn't work. Namely, if one of the terms in yp is actually a solution of the homogeneous equation. So this is easiest to see, the, see why this is going to be a problem if we do an example. So y double prime plus y prime minus 2y equals e to the x. So first we find the homogeneous solution, so that uh, the indicial equation will be m squared plus m minus 2 equals 0. Factor it, that is going to be um, m plus 2 m minus 1. So the roots of the indicial equation are m equals negative 2 and m equals 1. So the complementary solution is c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the x. And here you see the challenging case, because normally I would try yp equals some constant times e to the x. But if I substitute that in, I'm going to get y prime is a e to the x, y double prime is a e to the x, y double prime plus y prime minus 2y is a e to the x plus a e to the x minus 2a e to the x is 0. So that cannot be equal to the required right hand side, which was e to the x. Now that's not a coincidence. e to the x is a solution of the homogeneous equation. So when e to the x is substituted into the left hand side, it will give you 0. That's the problem. So, what's the solution? Well, the solution is, it turns out, is the same as what happened when we had a repeated root. Namely, you multiply the candidate solution by x. Now, it's possible to prove in all the cases that we've done here that this will actually work, that this method we're, we're outlining here will work, but we'll just um, examine it in the context of examples. Oh, don't have a blank page here. So let's just uh, make some white space. Okay, now so let's try it again with the uh, the new guess. So that the particular solution is going to be a times x times e to the x. Now I differentiate it, and I'll get um, well every term will have a coefficient of a in front, and from the product rule I'm going to get two terms, but the derivative of an exponential is the same exponential, so every term will also have an e to the x. So I will get first term times the derivative of the second term plus second term times the derivative of the first term. Derivative of x is 1. y double prime is a e to the x. First term times the derivative of the second term. That's 1. Plus the second term times the derivative of the first term, which is e to the x. Okay, so now y double prime plus y prime minus 2y comes out to be a e to the x times. From the y double prime term, I get x plus 2. From the plus y prime term, I get x plus 1. Minus twice the y term, I get 2x. And that has to be all equal to e to the x. Now, you look inside the square brackets there, x plus x minus 2x cancels. And that has to happen because 
I don't have an x e to the x on the right hand side. So if this is going to match, those x's in there must cancel. So I simplify the whole thing, I get 3a e to the x equals e to the x. 3a is equal to 1, a is 1 third. So the particular solution is 1 third x e to the x. Okay, so it worked. So let's try a different kind of an example. Now this one, this example, the periodically forced harmonic oscillator, this is this differential equation here, it's called the harmonic oscillator. Now this is extremely important in physics, so we're going to come back to this differential equation later on, um, but it's a good idea to meet it now. So a simple physical model that obeys this is a mass on a spring. Here's the mass, and it bobs up and down. And if you let y be the displacement from rest, then it's very easy to show from Hooke's uh, spring law that it will obey this differential equation. It's basically just uh, force equals mass times acceleration again. Now, if you just solve y double prime plus omega squared y equals zero, omega is some constant, the indicial equation will have solutions plus or minus i omega, so you'll get sines and cosines. So you get all the solutions are periodic with period uh, 2 pi over omega, frequency omega, sine omega t, and cos omega t. Now if I take that equation and apply periodic forcing to the right hand side, I'm now calling the independent variable t because I'm thinking of something evolving in time. Well, one case is easy. As long as alpha is not equal to omega, then that is not a solution of the homogeneous equation. So then yp would be a sine alpha t plus b cos alpha t, and the general solution would be a sum of two periodic functions, one with period, one with frequency omega and one with frequency alpha. Everything would be fine. So the important special case here, the one we want to do now, is called forcing at reson resonance. So when the forcing frequency on the right hand side equals the natural frequency omega of the system. So just so there's less uh, variables uh, floating around, I'll now set omega equals 1. So the natural frequency, the frequency of the uh, homogeneous equation is 1. So its solutions of the homogeneous equation are sine t and cos t. And one of them appears here. And I'm going to do an initial value problem where the oscillator is initially at, uh, at its rest position, y of 0 equals 0, and it's initially not moving, its initial velocity is 0 but it's being forced, so it will start, the, that external force will make it start moving. So here we go. Now I also have to remember that I'll need sines and cosines in there. So for the particular solution, I have to say y equals t times a cos t plus b sine t. Here we go. I need to differentiate this twice y prime is going to be first term times the derivative of the second term minus a sine t plus b cos t plus the derivative of the first term which is 1 times the second term a cos t plus b sine t differentiate again now when I have uh, this term Sorry, when I have um, this term times the derivative of the first term, I'll get minus a sine plus b cos, and that will match with the derivative of this term over here, minus a sine plus b cos. So altogether, I'm going to get two lots of minus a sine t plus b cos t, and then I'm going to get a t times the derivative of this term, which is uh, minus a cos t, plus b, uh, no, minus b sine t. The derivative of cos is minus sine. So put them all together, y double prime plus y is equal to 2 minus a sine t plus b cos t plus t minus a cos t minus b sine t 
that's the y double prime part, plus y plus t, a cos t plus b sin t. And this should be all equal to the right-hand side of the differential equation, which was cos t. Now, if everything is going well, the terms with t in them should all cancel. And they do, because here I have t times minus a cos t plus t times a cos t. So that one cancels with that one. Minus t b sine t plus t b sine t. So all the t terms must cancel, but, and that's good because I don't have any, have any of them on the right-hand side. So now I can just match coefficients. If I match the coefficient of sine t on both sides, I get minus 2a on the left and 0 on the right. If I match coefficients of cos t, I get 2b on the left from this guy and 1 on the right. Two equations and two unknowns. The solutions are a is a equals 0 and b equals a half. Oh, I've given myself some blanks, blank page, that's good. So I now know the particular solution. It is a is 0, b is a half, so it is a half t sine t. Okay, now I'm going to go back and look at the initial values. Write down the complete solution, which is the complementary solution. C1 cos t plus C2 sine t plus the particular solution. And you have to do that first before you fit the initial values. I'm also going to need y prime. That's minus C1 sine t plus C2 cos t plus first term times the derivative of the second term. I'm calling this one the first term, plus the derivative of the first term times the second term. So I need y of 0 equals 0, and y prime of 0 equals 0. y of 0 equals 0. Plug in t equals 0, I get c1. That one is 0, third term is 0, c1 is 0. y prime is 0. Substitute t equals 0, I get minus c1 times 0, I get c2 times 1, I get 0, and sine 0 is 0. So c2 is actually a 0 as well. They're both 0. So in this particular case, didn't actually need the, um, the complementary solution there. So the solution is y equals a half t sine t. Now what this means physically is, if you have the harmonic oscillator forced at a non-resonant frequency, different frequency to its natural frequency, the solutions will just be sines and cosines, and they will all oscillate in time and not grow. But if you force the harmonic oscillator at its resonant frequency, as in this case, the solution will be proportional to t, which means it grows in time. So I can graph this solution. I have to graph a half t sine t. Well, sine t oscillates up and down, it's a periodic function, but then the whole thing gets multiplied by a half t. So I have a sort of an envelope, it'll go up, sine t goes up and down between 1 and minus 1, so y will go up and down between half t and minus a half t, and it's going to start, go like this. Like that. So forcing a resonance can lead to unbounded growth in the solutions. Now I think I have one more example here. Yes, here we go. And you'll see in a second here um, that what I showed you earlier still sometimes won't work. And the reason is and it doesn't work in this example. Because the indicial equation is m squared minus 2m plus 1 equals 0. That's m minus 1 equals squared equals 0. So the roots are 1 and 1. So the complementary solution is c1 e to the x. But this is the double root case, so I have to multiply by x. c2 e to the... sorry. c2 times x e to the x. When you have a repeated root, 
you must multiply the exponential by an x to get two linearly independent solutions. But my right hand side is 6e to the x. So I can't guess e to the x for the solution because that will vanish because it's a homogeneous solution. But I also can't guess x e to the x because that is also a homogeneous solution. So I have to multiply whatever my previous guess was by x squared now. So the rule of thumb is you must multiply by the smallest power of x such that no term in yp is a homogeneous solution. So yp is going to be a constant times x squared e to the x. Okay, here we go. P prime is first term times the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of the first term times the second term. Yp double prime is I have to differentiate ax squared e to the x. Well, I know what that is. I just did it. So I get ax squared e to the x plus 2ax e to the x plus, now I have to differentiate this bit. First term times the derivative of the second term plus derivative of the first term, this is what I'm calling the first term, times the second term. Substitute into the differential equation y double prime minus 2y prime plus y and see what we get. Well, every single term has an e to the x, so I'll put that out in front. y double prime, that gives me, actually every single term has an a as well, so I can put that out in front. y double prime gives me an x squared plus 2x there plus 2x there, that's plus 4x plus 2. minus 2y prime, 2y prime is giving me an x squared plus 2x, plus y is x squared. Now a lot of this should cancel, because it's all supposed to come out to equal 6e to the x. And yes, the x squareds cancel, x squared minus 2x squared plus x squared, that cancels. 4x minus 4x, that cancels. So what's left? Not a whole lot. a e to the x, actually there's only the 2 left, isn't there? So 2a e to the x must equal 6 e to the x. That cancels, a is equal to 3. So the particular solution, it does work, I can do a match. My particular solution is 3x squared e to the x.